So, as I've mentioned a couple of times, I basically conceived of a YouTube channel as a backup for Goodreads. I've been reviewing on Goodreads for years, uh, but I think I need a backup of some of my more beloved reviews. And there's an interesting thing that happens on Goodreads. Uh, all of a sudden, a review for, that you posted years ago will pop up and half a dozen people in rapid succession will like that review. Sometimes they'll even comment, which is good. Now, I'm not sure if that's a bot or that's an algorithm or if some random book club in Eastern Bloc Europe has just decided to read this often rare and unusual book. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, I do quite appreciate it. In the last couple of days, a couple of people have hopped on and they've liked this book review that I did in 2019. Other Minds. The Octopus, the Sea and the Deep Origins of Consciousness by Peter Godfrey Smith. I loved that book so much. I gave it five out of five stars when I reviewed it. It's probably due for a reread. I will definitely be rereading it shortly, but I might not get to it this year. So, the review that I posted, I'm not going to post it again below, but I will post a link to my Goodreads one if anyone is interested. I enjoyed every page of it. I regretted that it was going so fast, um, but it did end well. It ended on a good note. I even wore my little octopus pendant while reviewing it. The title and the subtitle very accurately lay out its contents because it explores the mental world, worlds of octopus and cephalopods in general, the intelligence, how they might think, what the internal and external worlds of an animal and its perception of life will be if it's so different that it has two brains, one of them wrapped, I believe, around the stomach, and a neural net that is completely unlike ours. Their sensory net is also quite different. So I read a lot of non-fiction books. My preference is for zoology and marine biology books. I have a degree in that from way back. Anything to do with cephalopods in particular, I, I am keen for. You can see a couple of other books up there that I've read on the same topic. This one I found rather unique among all those I've read. And the unusual element, I think, can be traced to the fact that the author is a professor of philosophy rather than a marine biologist or a layperson. Um, marine biologists and scientists can get a little bit too deep into the science, and though a couple of people I know who read this book think it was a bit science-heavy, I thought it was very suited to the average reader or to any pop science reader. Um, as a professor of philosophy, however, he does write very nicely, very tidily. He doesn't have all the fussy, flossy, personal blah, blah, blah that a lot of journalists have when they try to read, write about um, science subjects that they don't actually know anything about. His, his understanding of academia comes through, and I find that writing very nice indeed. Um, he isn't a zoologist, he's a professor of philosophy. But he has done a lot of scuba diving, and I am deeply, deeply jealous of how much time he spent diving Octopolis in New South Wales. That's like a holy grail, to dive in one of the places with that many octopus living together in a way that for many, many years it was believed they never did. Because they've always been thought of as solitary animals, but Octopolis, and I think there's two more sites now, off the New South Wales coast of Australia have proven that octopus are perfectly good at living together. So that's really exciting. Um, as a philosopher who hung out doing marine biology, he's very good at describing the underwater world. And obviously he's hung around with marine biologists because um, the first part of the book tells us about the evolution of cephalopods, well, animals in general, from non-complex to complex life forms. Cephalopods don't yet have a backbone, so they're still an invertebrate, but they do have exceptionally um, high level of mental behavior, I suppose. Anyway, this talks about the prehistoric oceans, it des describes the ammonites and the balmonites that lived in it, um, and how the octopus and cuttlefish and squid of today are the descendants of those animals, but they've ditched the large heavy shells and rely on other forms of self-defense in the modern seas. So all of it was well written, and all of it was interesting. It was inter interspersed with octopus stories, and I found it absolutely lovely to read. A lot of it wasn't so much new to me as a refresher to things that I probably did know from uni or from reading since then. 
Um, but the way it was written was so lovely that it didn't really matter that you're being told things you already, you already knew. It was fascinating and fun. I think it would be easy to follow for anyone who had no background in those things, but I think most people will know a little bit at least. Later in the book, oh yes, later in the book the author addresses colours. That was brilliant, yes that is a pun, brilliant and colourful section of the book, which I absolutely adored. There was so much new information and the author brings together beautifully all the small bits of research that are relevant. So the, to the points he's making about octopus behaviour that is. And of course anyone who's ever marvelled at the amazing changes that an octopus or a cuttlefish can do should read this section even if they don't read anything else because if you're floating in, in the ocean above a coral reef watching a cuttlefish gently layer colours moving over his body as if clouds come, come going above the surface of the ocean I think this section will be very relevant to you. Um, I think part of what makes this book so spectacular at least a cephalopod lover like myself, is the beauty and clarity of which it is written. Because that's that's I think that's the academic coming through, like I mentioned earlier, and the anecdotes of diving. We divers don't have a lot of books that are targeted at us. A whole book about diving is kind of difficult to conceive. A few people have done it, but having someone who writes a book like this that is targeted at a scuba diver. I don't know if it is or not. I think a non-scuba diver will enjoy it as well but as a scuba diver if you're not currently diving reading about diving is great and there aren't too many options. This one was great. Uh, now it's only in the last portion of the book that he actually really addresses the title of it which is Other Minds. So that's where he starts to address the actual mind element. Um, I found that the hardest part to read. I've not read a lot of psychology and I've not read a lot of ethics philosophy a little bit of each but not that much and certainly not that recently so that one felt like the newest information for me again he draws from diverse writings relevant to the development of the concept of mind as opposed to brain um, and then it ties it all together with what we know about octopus and cuttlefish their behavior and how much of a mind they actually have, which personally I think is quite extensive. Uh, all in all, I thought this was a marvellous book. I was dismayed when it ended, to be honest. Um, I've picked it up a few times since to read specific little sections. It's got some gorgeous photographs of cephalopods right in the centre. I definitely picked that up to look at. Um, and, oh, it also has a really good bibliography, further reading. I haven't been able to get my hands on that many things from it, but I have read one or two extras from that. So yes, Other Minds. Thoroughly recommend to anyone who likes zoology or cephalopods or scuba diving or any of the good things in life, really. <laughs>